Hey there, welcome to Twin City United Methodist Church's online worship service for Sunday, May 24th. My name is David Donnan and I'm the pastor here and it's my honor to welcome you to our worship service today. We do have a few announcements before we get started. The first one is Happy Ascension Sunday. This is the Sunday where we remember Jesus' ascension into heaven. Now I'm going to have a sermon based on that too. We are going to be kicking off a new series of sermons called Thriving Through Transition. And we'll be looking at one of the greatest transitions that the early church went through and as well over the next several weeks. So I'm excited to share with you about that. Also, I want to give you the challenge that I've given for the past eight Sundays. And now this is Sunday number nine of us doing online worship. And the challenge is this. Lean in. The more that you lean into this worship service, the more you sing along, read along, read out loud, or recite a creed out loud when we ask you to, the more you comment with other people, the more you will get out of the service, the more I believe that God will bless you. So that's my challenge for you today. Also today, we are going to be encouraging you to fill out an online survey about helping us restart our church service. Right now, in-person worship will start the earliest June 21st or June 28th. We're going to be meeting and talking about the safest way to reopen, but we have a Google form survey that you can find on our Facebook page, and I can also text message it to you as a way to give us your input. Would you be comfortable wearing a mask, having your temperature taken? Would you rather us have multiple services so that you could come and be less crowded? We want to know these things. We don't want to make the decision on ourselves. We want to give you a voice. So please take a moment and fill out that digital survey. We also want to remind you that we have several ways for you to stay in touch. You're at one of them right now. You are attending our online worship service, but also on Wednesday nights at 630, we have a Bible study that you can message me to get access into the Zoom Bible study group through Facebook. You can email me or call me. I'd be happy to set that up for you. Also on Tuesdays, we have been releasing a Twin City check-in show where we talk to people in the community, although last week we talked to Bishop Lawson Bryan and we broke our role and had somebody outside the community. But for the most part, we've been checking in with church members and community leaders as a way to hear what's going on. We also have been sending out emails and of course you can always message me or call me for more information. I also would like to say happy Memorial Day. This is the holiday where we recognize how lucky we are to live in the United States and especially thank God for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. So if you would, would you please join me as we watch this video that marks this special day. On this day we remember. We remember your calling. We remember your courage. We remember your sacrifice. We remember your life. We remember what it cost you to pledge your allegiance to your country. Because of you, we can walk in liberty. Because of you, we can sleep in peace. Because of you, the flag is still there. Because of you, this is the land of the free. Because of you, this is the home of the brave. To the families and friends of the heroes we've lost, we salute you. Well, we give thanks to God for the very important sacrifice that people made so that we can enjoy the freedom and privileges that we have here. Well, as we move to say our creed this morning, I want to remind you that we do this each week to remember who we are and whose we are. Will you please join me as we recite this historic affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, as we prepare our hearts for our morning time of prayer, I want to encourage you to thank God today for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to live in the United States of America, to live in a time when it is the greatest superpower, to live in a time where it is a beacon for freedom and democracy, for fairness and acceptance. God, we ask that you would help us to remember the great privilege that we have to live here, and we ask that you would continue to bless our land and help us to be a nation that doesn't just live and operate for our own glory, but helps other nations and is a blessing to them. God, we also pray for ourselves this morning. We ask that you would help us from the things that separate us from you. Help us to walk in your ways and reflect your glory in this world. God, as we start this new week, as we head towards the end of this month, we ask that we may finish the month of May strong, that we may be a reflection of your love in this world. Help us this upcoming week with all the trials and tribulations that we face. Help us to walk in your ways. Help us to love you and love others. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we pray the prayer that he taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the part of the service where we talk about the offering. Now, we are not putting a pause on worship to talk about the offering. We believe here that faith and finances and worship are all tied together. So if you are able to, during this time, would like to continue tithing or giving to the life change and ministry that's happening here, you can mail a check to P.O. Box 6, Twin City, Georgia, 30471. Or if you would like, you can give safely and securely online. We have been blessed by the South Georgia Annual Conference with this online giving platform while we are meeting online. If you're somebody who is not able to give though because you have no income, then you have nothing to worry about. And if you need assistance or know somebody who needs assistance, please let us know. We are here to help. Thanks. Well, it's another week down and we once again have seen our world change a little bit. We have seen now for the sixth time in a row that we have had a tropical storm named a named storm before even the start of the hurricane season. We sadly see how the death toll with our hopes thinking it could be close to 80,000 is now inching closer to 100,000. We have seen how the Federal Reserve Chair has said that it looks like unemployment will continue to rise at least for a couple of months and that the economic recovery will be uneven at best throughout most of the year. Interesting also, he said that those who are making the least are hurting the most. Out of people who make under $40,000 a year, 40% of them are unemployed. We also have questions as we get back to preparing worship services, preparing in-person worship. We are wondering in this changing world, should we require people to wear a mask? And if we do, who's going to enforce it? Because it's not going to be me. We are asking, should we continue to sing as part of our in-person worship, even though it looks like there's at best some anecdotal evidence that singing has made several people sick from choir practices who have tried to social distance and people get sick in church services where people get sick? Should we have multiple church services in which we have an earlier time where people with um, an immune compromised system are able to come 
and worship and then a later time for other people. Should we worship inside or outside where there could be more sunlight and a higher humidity to hold down any germs in the air? I don't know about you. I'm just ready to get back to normal. I'm tired of this. And while my hardships have been light compared to some very serious problems that people are running into, I am just overwhelmingly ready for life to get back to normal. But what if there's not going to be a back to normal for a while? What if we are stuck in this time of transition? How will we adjust? Today we are starting a new series called Thriving Through Transition. And we're going to be looking at some of the turning points in the past Easter story and to the start of the early church. What are some things that happened as they were going through this great transition? And what can it tell us, the church today, about how we can live through the transitions we are going through? If you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Acts. We're going to look at chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And we are going to see maybe the greatest transition after the resurrection on Easter Sunday for the early church. It definitely up to this point, it is the greatest transition. You see, Jesus had been appearing to his disciples. He had appeared to the 11. He had appeared to some of them while Thomas was out. He appeared to them while they were fishing. He appeared to around 500 people at once. And all this occurred over about a 40-day span. And during these appearances, there was some interesting things where even though the doors were locked, that Jesus would come and stand among them. But he wasn't a ghost because he ate and he said, touch me, and invited them to put their hands inside of his wounds. It was an interesting time of great transition and many transitions. Jesus' death and resurrection and the disciples during this time have shown that they are overwhelmed with what is happening. And it's in this time of transition that Luke starts out the second volume of his records of what happened in the early church. And he's documenting what happened with Jesus and what happened after Jesus and what his followers carried on. So we're going to start in verse 1 of the book of Acts where it says this. Theopolis, the first scroll I wrote, concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs, and he appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father, for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. So this is Jesus talking. He said, John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Dr. Luke has set up the scene Jesus has been meeting with his followers, and he continues to preach heavily about this, the kingdom of God. And it seems that his disciples have a different kingdom in mind, because check this out. In verse 6, even though they've heard about how the kingdom is coming, verse 6 says this, As a result, those who had gathered together ask Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? They wanted to know, was Jesus about to overthrow the occupying forces in their land, the Roman army? Okay, Jesus, you've, you've died. You've shown that you have power over death with your resurrection. Now it's time for us to reestablish Israel as the most mighty nation. They were thinking in very nationalistic terms. They were thinking, Israel first. So what does Jesus say? Is it time for this country to rise? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
So instead of talking about how to make Israel first, he reminds them of the global scope of ministry. Jesus says, you are going to spread the message in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. With the implication of the message of salvation going all the way even to the Roman oppressors. Now, if you are someone who thinks of putting your country first, I do not fault you. We are actually wise to consider our country and what is best for it, especially as we are thinking through the troubles we've had during this pandemic as far as making our supplies in our own country, even if it's of greater cost, because we may be in an emergency situation and other countries may be too, and it would be nice to have our own supplies. And especially on a weekend like we are celebrating this weekend, remembering those who made the ultimate sacrifice, putting your country first, I do not think is a bad thing. So if you are a first century Jewish person and you want to say Israel first, that's fine. If you want to say America first today, I will probably join you in many regards. But if we fall into the trap of saying America only, we are outside of the kingdom of God. As Jesus tells his followers, our calling is bigger. The message is bigger. Our witness must be bigger than our own little tiny area. So in the middle of this, this kind of instruction that Jesus is giving them, uh, reminding them about their mission in the kingdom, something crazy starts to happen. Look at verse 9. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. You see, this right here is a dramatic climax to all of Jesus' after Easter appearances. By going into the cloud, I don't know if it was just a really dark cloud or a really uh, bright cloud or what type of cloud it was, but we know through biblical images in the Old Testament that the cloud is God's presence. That when Jesus went up onto the mountain and was transfigured in front of his disciples, that there was this cloud that represented God's presence there. And out of all the post-resurrection encounters with Jesus, there is no reference to this cloud taking Jesus away. This was something special for the last time they would see Jesus. And this is why we say in our creeds that Jesus sits at the hand of the Father Almighty. So a huge transition has just happened. Jesus has gone to sit at the Father's hand. So now what? Do we go fishing? Do we get regular jobs? Uh, do, we over, do we ourselves try to overthrow the Romans? Do we wait for the economy to get better? Do we wait on a vaccine? All these questions could have ran through their mind, but before they have time to ponder, while they are still looking up at the sky, something happens. Check out what happens. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. In the middle of what is happening, they hear from these angels. And the angels ask the disciples, why are you still looking? Don't worry. Jesus is coming back. Do they say things are going to go back to normal? These angels? No. Do they say things are about to get easy? No. They simply say, He is coming back. Churches, we ponder what happens next and ponder how to thrive through transition. I want us to remember this important truth. Christ will come again, even if normal does not. Christ will come again, even if normal does not. If you're watching this online and you can type in, would you just type in hashtag Christ will come again? Hashtag Christ will come again. And I'll give you a second to do that. 
Christ will come again, even if normal does not. You see, this is important because we need to realize the normal the disciples had where they would follow Jesus and he would teach them and the crowds would go, look, there's Jesus. That normal never came back for them. Yet, because they knew he was coming back and by God's Holy Spirit, they started doing some very hard and very rewarding work. Christ will come again even if normal does not. Church, I do not know what the future holds for the economy or how long it will zigzag up and down. But I know this. God is calling us to love those who are affected by the economy. We are not, we are not being called to simply sit and wait for the return of Jesus. We are called to get to work. We have a mission given by God. So what does it look like to fully embrace that Christ will come again, even if normal does not? I think we look to the disciples. They met together in prayer until God's Holy Spirit moved them. This Tuesday, our administrative one board will get together, and we're going to do that. We're going to pray. We're going to talk about what's happening in the church. But we're going to say, God, how would you have us to open our church? Who are the authorities you want us to check with? How can we do it in the most loving and respectful way? You see, individually, you can do this too. Yes, you can pray by yourself, but you can also pray for others. And you can call others and ask, how can I be praying for you? You see, this passage isn't just a call, though, to be in prayer. It is a call to action. While the disciples are trying to process what is going on and staring at the clouds, the angel showed up and reminded them that Christ is coming back. You see, a mission has been given to the people who follow Jesus. We witness. We share what God has done. And we process ourselves what God is doing in our life. That's why I was so thrilled last week after the sermon. I challenge you to consider what it is that God is teaching you during the quarantine. And I've been so blessed by the messages I've got of people saying, I think God's doing this or, or God is doing that. Or I've always struggled with this. You see, we are able to witness and share what God is doing because Christ will come again, even if normal does not. We haven't taken communion in a while because we haven't been able to safely administer the sacraments and we don't do it online. Um, we believe in doing it together. But when we do take communion, one of the things we say in our liturgy is Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. It is a way for us to remember that Christ is coming back. To remember all his deeds, but I love that last part. Christ will come again. Will you join me and say that one part from our liturgy? I'll put it up on the screen. Join me. One, two, three, go. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hey, thanks. Good job. Christ will come again, even if normal does not. Finally, let us consider that we do not get to dictate what normal is. Already, most of us are learning to adapt. But I will be the first to admit, change is hard. I've got plenty of pastor friends who are actually having to move and say goodbye to their churches and say hello to their other churches during the pandemic. And I can't imagine how hard that is. I'm worried about a school in the fall. What is that going to look like? Are we going to be taking temperatures every day that a student comes in? And I just hope by God's grace we're able to have health and, of course, football. We want to see what Tom Brady looks like in a Buccaneers uniform. I'm saying that lightheartedly. But I wonder what will happen. Today's sermon is not necessarily about a specific action that I know to tell you what to go do. But it is a mindset that I want you to adopt you see, following Jesus is never about just simply staring up at the sky, having celestial thoughts. No, following Jesus is about knowing our lives will be ever-changing, that there may never be a new normal, but that in the midst of that change, Christ will come again, even if normal 
does it. You have to figure out where is your Jerusalem, your close proximity, and how can you witness there? Where is Judea and Samaria, the places you don't want to go? And just start there and bear witness. Because even when it's crazy, even when things look like they're not going to be normal, Christ will come again, even if normal does not. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for being a never-changing God. We thank you that the words that Jesus said are true. But God, we confess it is hard when our world is dramatically changing. It is hard when it changes so much that we even forget to think about you. Help us, Lord, to be more aware of your promise to love us and guide us. And help us to remember that you will come back for us. Help us to remember that Jesus will come again, even if normal does not. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, now to lead us in our closing song, Mr. David Dudley. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I hope that you heard God speak to you in some way. If you got something out of the service, would you take a moment and share it on whatever streaming platform you're watching this on as a witness to you attending church and the importance it is to you. Would you receive this benediction? Heavenly Father, as we go from this place, may your grace go before us and your face shine upon us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Thanks. Have a good week and let me know if you need anything.